So we're looking at Unit 5 of the Level 4 Certificate in Education and Training. Unit 5 is planning to meet the needs of learners in education and training. And there's four learning outcomes on here. And it's all about, um, we've covered this in Unit 4 quite a bit. It's about um, your initial and diagnostic assessment. So it's quite based on that for learning outcome 1. So learning outcome one is to be able to use initial and diagnostic assessment to agree individual learning goals with learners. Learning outcome two will be be able to plan inclusive teaching and learning in accordance with internal and external requirements. So you need to do a scheme of work, which I'll give you a template for. And um, I'm pretty sure you're doing a, a lesson plan in here as well. Okay. Learning outcome three is to be able to implement the minimum core in planning inclusive teaching and learning, which we come across so many times already, but it yeah. obviously just changes slightly. And then learning outcome four, be able to evaluate your own practice when planning inclusive teaching and learning. So they've got a nice pattern that they go through for all of these units. So we're going to do analyze the role and use of initial and diagnostic assessment in agreeing individual learning goals. 1.2, use methods of initial and diagnostic assessment to negotiate and agree individual learning goals with learners. And then 1.3 is record learners individual learning goals. Goals, not close. <laughs> oh dear. Let's start. So again, just as a quick recap, initial diagnosis, uh, initial assessments are there to help you find out what your learners actually know, what they are, you know, identify any aspects which um, might go unnoticed, have a conversation with them, find out about what their, you know, backgrounds are, what they've actually learned. So it's just about you getting to know the learner themselves. Mm -hmm. It might be that they've got quite a disruptive background where they can't access, um, where they've got issues, family issues, and you know that they might be bringing in work late or they might have to work in the uh, setting. It might be that they don't have internet access and they may need to access the library or be given a bit of leeway. So just think personally about them. Initial assessments are good for that. Okay. Diagnostic assessments are good just to know what your learner skills are, what their knowledge is, what their strengths are, and if there's any areas that they can develop. So it's more on their uh, skills and uh, learning on this section. So 1.1, analyze the role and use of initial and diagnostic assessment in agreeing individual learning goals. So when we're looking at um, initial and diagnostic assessments, how do we use it and what is the role of this? So the role of both of these initial and diagnostic assessments are just there for you to establish a starting point so that you know where your learner is actually starting from, what their base is. This will help the learner and also the teacher to agree on SMART goals so you can agree on um, and create different individual learning plans for them, things that are actually realistic and specific for each learner. So having a group of 10 learners and you all deciding, oh, we're all going to work on the same SMART goals, that's not going to work because it might not be applicable to everyone. So this helps you to do it individualized and make it unique for each person. Initial assessments, um, again, they'll just help you, you probably know all this as well from our previous unit. They help you to identify your learner's prior knowledge, what their skills are, and also to assess the suitability of what program they're on. So can they come in and do this? If they were coming on to do one of my healthcare courses, can they come on and um, are they suitable to learn the healthcare program? Are they on the correct level of study? If they're coming in and they're going to be doing the level, uh, they need to do assignments which require a high level of um, understanding of English. Have they got that uh, uh, capability to be able to carry out and write assignments? If not, then you'd put them on a, a lower level of study, say level one or a level two, and work them up from there. So it helps you to uh, get information 
for what sort of delivery you're going to be using as well because you might need to tweak it you might have a quite a nice highly informed group where then level of knowledge is quite well they've been working in a particular sector like yourself you've been working in education for a number of years so you've got a very good understanding of what goes on in school so for you, I'd be able to use a, a different type of delivery where I can talk more in depth about certain things. I'll expect you to ask me questions that might challenge me or that might challenge you. With somebody who's completely fresh off the boat and is just thinking about coming into education, I might need to tweak the way um, I tell them. I might need to explain certain things that they may not know what assessments are what happens at the beginning of a school year, how you support someone, what interventions are. So it changes the way you actually deliver your um, courses out as well. So in a nutshell, it gives you a baseline, so a starting point for your learner. It helps you to put special conditions in place. So, you know, is there something that you need to be adapting for? Do you need to make sure that you're giving somebody extra time because they've not got internet um, at home? Or have they got any learning requirements that you need to adapt for? Now, if you from here for recognition of prior learning, for example, if you were to go on to the next level of study, you're on level four now, if you were to go on to level five, there might be some units that you won't have to do because you've got something called recognition of prior learning because they can be cross-referenced to um, other units and so on. So what sort of, can they miss certain things out? Do they have to do everything from start to finish? And what the suitability of them is to be on that program? Is that okay, what we've gone over uh, for initial yeah. assessment? Yeah. yeah. For diagnostic assessment, this is just like a pre-assessment. It helps the educator to figure out what your students' strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what their knowledge is, and what sort of skills they got prior, so before starting this course. So they also help you to figure out what sort of learning support needs there are, any gaps and any skills, help to meet basic skills and minimum core, and also to figure out the preferred learning style. So what does your student best learn with? Do they like to be a visual learner? Are they more of an auditory learner? And so on. And then you look at your learning goals. Now, we've not looked at learning goals previously. We're going to be looking at them now. Mm -hmm. Now, learning goals, I'm just going to read through this because it's the best way to explain. So learning goals are the knowledge and abilities that students gain from training or education. Now, these learning goals are designed to show the value of a learning program, of a session, of an exercise or an activity that they're doing. And they're typically expressed with action verbs that illustrate what participants will be able to do or demonstrate upon completion of learning so your learning goal your learning objective is the same as what we've got here so if I go back onto what this is here we've got our learning goal is be able to use initial and diagnostic assessment so for us that is our learning goal for a, a student uh, who may be in reception or year one their learning objective uh, because I know you have LOs for uh, younger students as well, maybe be able to count to 10 or mm. be able to identify different shapes and colours, those type of things. Is that clear? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. So these learning goals can also include setting long or short term targets. So, you know, saying that um, with the comprehension, I will be able to um, use my, um, I will be able to explain what happens in the story, or I will be able to use full stops and capital letters for when you're doing spelling and grammar. Mm -hmm. They can also have something called individual or group contracts. Now, I've not come across these for younger students, so I'm presuming that these are for the older ones in uh, within a school setting. It's where students will make agreements and they'll um, say that, okay, we're, we're a team, we're going to be working together on one project and this is what our tasks are and they'll set things out for themselves. 
or if they have an individual contract, they'll be able to set themselves like a scale or a schedule of what they're going to be able to do, just so they can identify what their own behaviors are, what they actually need to be doing, what their tasks are. Now you would have action plans. Now an action plan, the, in, the difference between action plan and individual learning plan is, action plans are normally whole class-based where you're figuring out, or you're just actually putting down using the like the national curriculum standards and saying we're going to be learning about uh, fractions and decimal points for this term and then you're putting down how you're going to break those up individual learning plans are just that they're based on the individual so they're student by student so they'll be focused on the action plans they'll be looking at fractions and decimal points but they'll be saying how is this student going to learn this what steps are they going to take to be able to learn this uh, fractions and decimals in math. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Right, so on here, to answer 1.1, you just need to analyze the roles of initial assessments and diagnostic assessments and learning goals. Now, because this is an analysis, you're going to be talking about what the initial assessments are, it's quite similar to what you've already done. So look in your previous work. If you've already written down what initial assessments are, diagnostic assessments are, just copy and paste that into here. Mm -hmm. And then put in a section for learning goals. And because this is an analysis, you need to include the pros and cons or the benefits and disadvantages of each one. So tell me what's good about initial diagnostic and learning goals. And then tell me what's bad about it. So, mm -hmm. you know, what can you see that is uh, disadvantageous about these things and then you can also put a couple of sentences in uh, you know just giving me a thought on what you think okay so 1.2 move this there so use methods of initial and diagnostic assessment to negotiate and agree individual learning goals with learners so there's a lot of different methods of initial and diagnostic assessments, and you've already seen a lot of these. You know that there's observations, there's tests, there's conversations, there's group activities. So there's a million things that you can actually do. But you need to use these to actually agree individual learning goals with your learners. Now, it's very important that these assessment methods that you use will have some sort of skill or knowledge assessment within it so they are actually testing what their skills are what their knowledge are you're not just sitting there and having a simple conversation which leads to nothing now the method you used will be set upon uh, what the policies you've got or the procedures you've got within your own workplace it'll be done in accordance to the learner group's ability and also with the subject that being taught so it's going to be these three things that you look at you look at the policies you've got at work what procedures you're going to be following who you're actually looking at what is their understanding are they um, an SEN group are they a, a mid-level group or are they a high level group and then what topic are you teaching click for it yeah. So these methods, and you probably have come across these before, they include things like interviews, multiple choice question and answer, and not all of these are age appropriate, so you'd have to decide which ones are age appropriate for your students. Mm -hmm. Quizzes, computerized tests, practical tests, written assignments, discussions, verbal and non-verbal communication like observations and conversations, and questionnaires. Now, in regards to your learners, these can always be adapted to suit your learners. They don't have to be stuck in one particular choice. If you're doing a quiz, you could do it in a very simple, basic form where you just, you know, ask them a couple of simplified questions if they're quite young. Within this as well, we also use English, maths and your learning preference tests as well. And these are part of your initial assessments. And these will also be able there to help and support your learner. So the reason we do English, maths, and your learning preference, like your um, learning style, in other words, 
uh, test is just so that we get a bit of a basic background you know what is your student for your younger student what are they like with their spelling not every six or seven year old can spell the same as each other not every six or seven year old has the same understanding as each other some are born at the beginning of the year so they've got uh, September, October, November birthday, so they're quite more mature than the ones that will be born at the end of the year, say um, June, July. And if you, um, I remember once being in my year one class with my class teacher, and uh, we were making, um, updating our birthday wall, because I don't know if you've got in your class, we've got, we had these hot air balloons with their names on it saying this person's birthday is on the, June the yeah. 10th and so on, yeah. And mm -hmm. then from there we just uh, we were just moving it from one area to the other and we hadn't really paid much attention to it and then we were doing it we thought oh actually you can see the big gap in uh, understanding within the students now this doesn't mean that the uh, students that were born in september october november december were cleverer than the ones at the uh, end of the school year it was just uh, we could see a difference in their maturity so mm. it does make a, a difference, isn't it? I mean, when you go back in, just have a bit of a look and see if you can notice that. And I'm pretty sure you'll be able to pick out certain children that you're like, oh, that's why. Yeah. So there are some methods of initial and diagnostic assessments, and we're going to look at them. And these are there just to negotiate and agree individual learning goals with your learners. So you're actually working with your learners about this. Now, this one here, I feel that um, the information that's on here is more for an older group of students. So if you want to talk about your younger students, you can just change it a little bit or you're welcome to use these examples mm -hmm. and have it as an older group. So for initial, you're going to look at what is going to inform their individual learning plan. So you could look at something like information from their CV. So if I was going to do an individual learning plan with yourself, I'd probably ask you for your CV and look at what your past experiences are, what jobs you've had previously, what education you've had. I look at your application form for when you put your enrollment um, information and in saying that I want to start this course because it'll have a bit of information in there. We might do an interview. So instead of an interview, uh, I'd say this would be the induction for us where we had that discussion over uh, join me and we just went through the course and we talked a little bit. And I asked you a million questions because I'm nosy. And uh, things like exercises or tasks. Diagnostic will be done on things like your knowledge or your skills tests. You know, I asked you to do a, I'm pretty sure, did I ask you to do a learning uh the styles questionnaire mm, no oh i didn't i normally do you know i know i've done it with the naughty me smack my hand but i normally do a, a learning styles questionnaire just to see what sort of style you're on so i can tweak my lessons in accordance to that we could do paper or online diagnostic assessments with the diagnostic assessments that I do, I really just use your uh, written assignments that you send in to me just to see how you're going and um, go. So it could be your actual your essays and your coursework that you're looking through throughout the uh, course of study. Mm. And then negotiation. There'll be like things like self-assessment. You might carry out a self-assessment for yourself. You might have a discussion. We might talk about any um, recognition or acknowledging any skills or learning um, techniques that you already have. You might want to talk to you about what sort of support you need. You know, if there's something that um, I know I had a student that told me that um, quite uh, late into our sessions told me that uh, she had uh, a certain learning requirements. And um, it really changed the way I started teaching her then because at the beginning I was thinking I'm, I'm teaching in a particular way. I don't think it's really gelling. We're not meshing that much. It's, uh, I feel like she's struggling. Then when she felt comfortable, she opened up to me and she told me that she had learning requirement. After that, I completely changed the way I taught her and I went a lot slower, went at the pace she needed and it worked for her. And I found that she was more interactive after that. So... Mm -hmm. It's where you're saying, right, no, I'm, this is not working for me. I need to do it in this way. And it does help. It's not you 
pulling someone up and saying you're not teaching me well or you're not doing something right it's just about saying that this isn't working for me I need you to be able to help me better mm-hmm. so there's loads of things on here I mean when you were in um when you were doing your TA qualifications did you physically go into a college to do those yeah the level two I did yeah do you remember when you used to have appraisals like twice a year where your tutor mm. would uh, yeah those are the same sort of things they'd appraisal they'd have an appraisal with you they'd see how you're doing and then ask you how are you getting on do you need any assistance can we change something and I remember when I used to have my appraisals when I was doing my TA courses because that's the first time I actually came across them to my knowledge or the first time I was actually aware of them is that Mm -hmm. I'd be like yeah I'm okay with this but sometimes I feel like I might need a bit more information about this and we'd agree on some learning goals Mm -hmm. Whatever you agree on, whatever your goals are, they still should follow SMART. So be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timed. So if you're going to say, Afsha, I want you to go ahead and I want you to do a assignment for me and you give me a six week schedule. That's too long. I'm going to ignore it. I'm not going to be bothered about it. I'll be like, oh, it's all right. So if I'm telling, if you're telling me, oh, you've got two weeks to do it. I'd be like, right, I need to get onto it because it's going to take me a little while to finish it off. So I, I know that I'll actually do it. So don't be too tight with your timing and don't be too loose with your timing. Mm-hmm. I've never actually had to say to you that you've got two weeks for this, but normally my timing for uh, all my students are, you've got two weeks, you need to give me your assignments within from our last lesson within two weeks. But we've worked at a different uh, rate where we've not had any gap. We've just been because you've been keeping up on a weekly basis. Uh, we've been able to just do lesson by lesson per week. So you adapt in um, accordance to what your student can do. Okay. So how to answer this? Just talk about how you use different methods of assessment. So how do you negotiate with your students? How do you agree individual learning goals with them? So you you can talk about how you use initial, um, just like one paragraph just mentioning that you use initial and diagnostic assessments and you negotiate with your students and um, how you actually um, use these assessment techniques to just figure out what sort of goals your student needs and talk to them about it. Mention how they're always smart targets. And then make sure you use your present tense. Now, because this is a bit of an odd one, I suggest you just use a reflective account. So just think about a time where you supported your class or your group and said, right, we need to make goals. And you all might have uh, had the goal where you're going to learn your number bonds up to five first. And then you're going to work. You can spend two weeks learning your number bonds up to five and then you're going to spend another week learning them up to 10 then up to 20 and so on how you negotiated that and how you worked it into their daily schedules okay and so is 1.2 okay yeah brilliant so let's go on to 1.3 and this is the last one the 1.3 is record learners individual learning goals now when you Ah, ah, let me just write this down. I need to get rid of that. 15, double A. <laughs> so when you're making um, learning goals, it's important to make learning goals, but it's also important to make sure that they're written down as well so that you can access them. Any other staff members that might cover for you can access them. And most importantly, your students actually know what you're talking about, what they're actually meant to be doing. So if you make a learning goal and your student has no idea, it's not going to happen. It's just going to go uh, undone. So these learning goals will include progression routes. They'll be based on your initial and diagnostic assessment information. You'll most likely have learning targets. You'll record what progress has been made and what achievements have been made. So these are the things that you'll be looking at in a learning goal. So these records, they just act as a communication aid. They're just like a document that is um, done between uh, you and your student and it supports your student in the learning process. 
So it's just like an appraisal form that may, might be filled out for you at work between your colleagues where you're putting down what you're doing, how you're getting on, and then any goals that you want to work on and any goals that you've previously achieved. So by recording each learner's goals, this will give you the opportunity just to gather all of that information so you can gather all of your students' targets, what their action points are, what goals they're working toward and what sort of dates they're going to be done by so that you can review them or achieve them. So if you know that you're going to meet back together and have another appraisal in three months' time, you might want to set a couple of goals for your students. Say, right, I'd like you to work on these goals. We'll meet again in January and we'll discuss how you got on with them. Now, that doesn't mean that you'll completely ignore your student. If you see in the middle that they're struggling or they've met them, then um, you just change them. You just add things up for them. Make sure that the student has a record of these as well. So it'll just be like a piece of document where you might um, have a photocopy of it. One will go to your student. One will be kept with you in their file. And um, get them to sign it. You know, it always makes it more important when a student is signing it and saying yes I'm going to be working on these by this day is more official mm -hmm. so once you've agreed it once it's been recorded you're going to uh, have it like a, a priority so these are going to be reviewed um, the teacher will actually review the targets in a timely manner so you're not going to leave six seven months in between check them again three months time check them again in a month time for you within primary, um, you'll probably be checking your students' goal lesson by lesson. Mm. Because if you say to them, use your capital uh, capitals, use your finger spaces, use your full stops, you're not going to leave it three weeks before you mention it again. You'll be mm. saying it every single time you look at their work, yeah? And then if they've done it, say, well done, you've done that, that's amazing. Now you do that sometimes. Sometimes you're doing capital letters and full stops and finger spaces. Make sure you do it every single time. Once they start doing it every single time, so well done, right, I've got a new target for you. Now I want you to be able to uh, use some describing words. Can you use some adjectives in here? So just adapt it. So when you're recording individual learning goals, um, you need to make sure that you follow the follow areas. So you're um, covering these following areas. Make sure you're looking at the individual learning plan so that you're actually focusing on what has been set out for them already. Look at the action plans. So the action plans, again, are more uh, overall learning objective, what they're going to be learning over a period of time. Make sure you follow your um, procedures and uh, policies um, for where you are to you know, record the information correctly. Cover your learners' rights, so don't discriminate them, don't penalise them. Make sure that they, you know, they're getting that equality and they're getting inclusion, and there's nothing being done that they're not getting treated in the way that they should be. And then sometimes you might need to share your um, learning goals and learning plans with other members of staff. For example, your class teacher in your classroom will be sharing what her learning goals are for the students with all the members of staff that work within her setting within her class so um, just to make sure that you know exactly what's going on as well and that she's not the only person uh, you know policing it or making sure that it actually happens so are you okay with what we've gone over for 1.3 so far yeah so let's go on to the last section here so the tips to answer this so just Start by explaining why learning records, why you record individual um, learner goals. So why does this take place? So, for example, you record them so that all information is recorded and accessible for any professional, for so any person who wants to support the students. You're going to make sure that records are made available to students so that they can access them, they can review them, they can set targets in a timely manner so that they can actually work on their targets as well and make sure that they're following their actions that you've set for them. Mm -hmm. So just a few points, a paragraph on that. And then just explain how this is done. So you just follow your individual learning plans. You're going to base it off your action plan. 
you're going to follow your organization's procedures, you're going to make sure that you're covering that right, so being inclusive and that you're, you know, sharing it as appropriate with the appropriate members of staff. So it's just about two paragraphs, nice detailed ones in here. You can also include uh, some appendices to support this, so something like an individual learning plan or an action plan. These things you should have available in school um, as it is if you've not got them on hand in class, because I remember um, we used to have folders for each student where yeah. we'd have the individual learning plan. If you've not got that, then um, ask your class teacher. If not, you can do a very basic uh, search on the net and uh, lots of examples come up of learning plans and action plans. Okay. Yeah, so let's go of... Oh dear, I forgot to show you this. There you go. An example of a learning plan and an action plan. I should have put these in before. So yeah, it's just like a learning plan based on a particular student going through what their development is going to be, what the short term goals are, how are you going to do it, what sort of grouping it's going to be, is it going to be class activity or individual activity, and when it's going to be done by. And then a um, action plan is like you're going to be learning about the topic of water in science. So you're going to be uh, t talking about meters and taps and water butts. So these will be separate lessons. For each lesson, you're going to have an action, how you're going to measure it, what the time scale is, whose responsibility is, and um, is it what the result was? Were, were they able to learn it or did you need to give more information on this? And these are just some real simple searches I did on the internet. I just put in ILP and I just did action plan and there's so many available. Okay.